and fitness. This has been a long time coming. I apologize for my hiatus. I have done the whole nomad thing and just doing a master class on a coffee shop wasn't really working for me. <laughs> um, and then there's been some other curveballs of life, but all good things for sure. But I'm just so excited to be here now filming this master class for YouTube and for IGTV and really just jumping into this topic because it's such an important one. So let's do it. Body, love, and fitness. Let's go over what we're gonna cover and then I'm gonna set the container, cool? First of all, we're gonna cover what is body love? What does that mean? What is that all about? Number two, we're gonna create, or we're gonna talk about how to create a delicate balance between self-discipline and self-acceptance. The third thing we're gonna do is walk through my exact process that I take each client through to drop body fat, gain muscle tone, and curves, you know, exactly where they like to have them, and then maintain these results long-term easily and effortlessly. Uh, number four, I'm gonna explain to you guys how to use the concept of body love to rig the game to win. And then lastly, I'm going to give my exact formula for escaping the insecurity trap of Instagram. So this is like the formula that I kind of teach on how to use. Um, you know, when all the Photoshopped images of the fitness models kind of threaten to derail our confidence and our healthy self-image. This is something that we can do to really stop that from happening. Cool. So let me set the container. Who am I? If you are just happening on my Instagram profile or my YouTube page for the first time, I am Leanne Price. I'm a 13-year fitness, weight loss, and body transformation coach. I hold eight certifications currently, um, and I've had the honor of helping hundreds of men and women lose weight and get into the best shape of their lives over the course of my career. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm the founder of L3 Method, which is a 16-week private VIP transformation program for women with supportive, trauma-informed results and self-care focused coaching with me, yours truly. <laughs> and L3 VIP is currently yielding a really high sustainability success rate among my clients, and I think it's because we're combining the emotional intelli intelligence quotient with the fitness. This is so important. And this is like the essence of these masterclasses if you kind of boil them down to what they really are. So disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a licensed psychologist. The information I provide today is for info resources only. Um, and it's not to be taken as a diagnosis or medical treatment um, in any way, shape, or form. Please consult with your physician before starting an exercise or nutrition program. And prior to making any healthcare decisions regarding a specific medical condition. Additionally, I want you guys to know that what I share today and gauge against, um, or I want you to gauge against your own system. So feel into your own truth, feel into what aligns, keep what feels good to you and just throw out what doesn't. Um, I want you to practice self-compassion tenfold. Um, this is you practicing emotional responsibility in essence. And I tell every member of L3 this every time we hop in a coaching call or a training session. But again, if what I says, if what I say lands for you, utilize it. If not, toss it out. You're, you know, a sovereign being. You are the ruler of your own castle, of your own world. And your yeses and your noes always get to be honored in this way. <clears throat> cool. Um, I mean, there's more in my container than I usually talk about, but I think that's kind of the essence. Um, I would also say DM me if something cuts really deep. You know, I'm not about like dropping bombs and then exiting stage left. I'm here to support you. If if we go over something and you're like, ooh, I really feel that, that really triggered me or that really like caused me to think about something else in my life and I, I could use some support, I'm here for you. This is my job full time. This is all I do is I, um, I help out with fitness coaching for sure, but then there's so much more than that that's at play. Like, the thing is never about the thing, right? It's it's never just about fitness. Food and body are kind of the innocent bystanders. And if we dig deeper, the roots of our insecurities, the roots of where the body image issues, the body dysmorphia, the binge eating, whatever, you know, what have you, the roots of these things never started out as fitness related. They started out with something much more, you know, fundamental, much more primary, typically with you know, the first two people in our life that we knew or didn't know, our mom and dad or whoever our caretakers were, followed by siblings, friends, relationships, so on and so forth down the line. 
So, uh, cool. Let's talk about body love. And I, I mentioned relationships with others because it's really helpful to sometimes think about your relationship with your body like as if it's a relationship with another human. It's a great analogy to use because then it can quickly help you realize like, oh, this is not how I would treat someone else. Why am I treating my own body this way? But more on that in a moment. So what is body love? To love equals to have an intimate relationship with. So to be intimately in relationship with someone or something, that's loving them. Um, and this starts with communication, right? You can't be intimate with someone. You can't have a loving, close relationship without communicating with them. And so the first step to communication isn't always talking. Sometimes it's listening, but listening with attunement. Listening not just to respond, right? But listening in order to better understand. So let's just use that analogy that I just mentioned with another human being. If you're seeking attunement with another, you're not just listening, 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 but you're staying up in your head. You're really trying to attune to their system and figure out what is the meaning behind the words they're saying. So with our bodies and fitness, so often we can have a fitness goal up here and not check in with the real customer, our body, as to whether that goal is fully in alignment or not. And if we attune to our bodies and we listen, not just to respond. So in this case with our bodies, we're not listening to our bodies just so we can continue to shove the goal, continue to shove the fitness game plan down their throat, down our body's throat. Hey, that's nice. You you have a headache or your hamstring hurts, but we're still going to do this anyway because we said we're going to. I said 15 reps, we're going to do 15 reps instead of wow, my hamstring really hurts. If I do any more reps, I might injure it or I might injure it further. That's something I should pay attention to. So if we attune to our own body, we can start to gauge what is um, in alignment and then what is out of alignment, potentially. Okay, so body love, love therefore means not overriding the body with the mind. So I want to give you a couple examples of this. Um, so one way that we like not override the body with the mind, but like here's a quote. But I don't understand. How do we get anything accomplished if we just accept the way we are and love ourselves as is, et cetera, et cetera? So people will say, well, if I just accept my body and I don't have any discipline, then I'm not going to get anything done. If I just if I just accept the way I am, if I'm not happy with my weight or my degree of healthiness right now, but I just I just accept it. It's just fine. I'll just continue to sit on the couch and eat Doritos and that's cool. That's not body love either. It's not taking care of your body to sit on the couch night after night after night and eat Cheetos or Doritos or Fritos <laughs> or any of the chips that end in O's. <laughs> um, so I kind of want to like just point out to you how body love doesn't mean just succumbing to a fear. So if we are, if we've sat on the couch our whole lives and eaten Fritos, then we don't know what it's like to be an active fit person who eats celery and maybe goes for a walk in the evening or, you know, eats a balanced meal and um, catches a workout in the morning or what have you. We don't know what that's like if we've never had that. So the body will fear it, will have, will be scared because it's, it's an unknown thing. So the body will always try to protect us from what is fearful, from what it doesn't know to be safe. So just because something's unknown and just because there's fear around it doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually something to be feared. It just means something that we don't have um, a level of consciousness around. It just means something that we don't have a visceral bodily experience with yet. So it's that delicate balance between feeling into, okay, am I just scared of this because I am not familiar with it? Or am I scared of this because my intuition is telling me this is a really bad idea and I shouldn't venture towards this? So getting really good at discerning between the two, that's, that's where attunement really comes in. So body love to outline is not discipline. I'm going to do 15 reps no matter what. That's the only thing that matters. And then on the other extreme, body love is not, I fully accept the way I am. So I'm, you know, really, really overweight and really unhealthy and I don't do anything kind to my body. I'm just going to accept that. That's not loving your body either. It's the blend of both. OK, 
okay? Um, <clears throat> so what body love could look like. Let's say you do, you're like, I'm going to do 15 reps of this exercise. On the ninth rep, your hamstring says, hmm, this isn't a good idea, please stop, like this is hurting. You're listening to your body, you're tuning to it, and then you say to yourself, okay, should I push or should I stop on the ninth rep? Okay, my hamstring's really telling me to stop. I'm going to stop. And then after that decision is made, I'm also not going to beat myself up because I didn't do 15 reps. I'm going to understand that there is a very good reason why I didn't do those 15 reps. And so there's going to be no shame or guilt after the fact. That's part of body love. Okay. So I want to give like more balances in between. It's a balance between discipline and acceptance. A balance between head and heart. Masculine and feminine. Goals and gratitude. Pressing forward and maintaining presence. Forward motion and inclusivity. So hopefully that's like an even more comprehensive illustration. So I want to highlight that the relationship with yourself is the most precious and fruitful one you'll ever have if you take time to cultivate it. So if you're thinking about your relationship with your body, specifically not just your body, but like, you know, or specifically we're going to talk about your body because this is a fitness masterclass. This is a fitness page. Um, but we still want to think about it as if we're in a relationship with another person. If we feel stuck or confused, again, like I said, this is a very useful analysis, an analogy. Um, yeah, so we're in the process of balancing and harmonizing both of those energies. And pursuing your fitness goals will really rely on these if we want long-term results. So this is kind of like the layout of how you can go about a goal. This is what I, this is how I teach. Number one, you have your goal. So you define your fitness goal, your vision, feel into what it would feel like if you already had this goal accomplished. Feel into the journey too. How does it feel? How does your body respond when you think of these things? What physical sensations will arise? Um, what emotions? So this is part of like asking the body's permission. So that's also a part of body love. And this is crucial. This is, you know, this is like if your head is on board but your body's not, your results will be short-lived at best and non-existent at worst. Okay, number two, so you get your vision, number one. Number two, you got a plan of action. So you research, you fill into each part of it, and you make it detailed and specific. And then the third thing, this is really important, plan for the breakdowns. So breakdowns are a necessary part of the process. They're here to show us why we haven't already done this yet. You know, if you just set a goal and you easily reach the goal and there's no setback or breakdown or like point in which you just mess up, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't happen because then that would already be in existence and be a stabilized part of your life. But you're setting the goal because there's some contrast there, there's some like, there's some tug back and forth. I'm not really sure how to do this and I have to learn my ways around and that's where the breakdowns occur. And those are so important. Those are such fruitful times for you to learn about you and about what has been sabotaging you and keeping you from this goal and then how you can now see what you're really made out of, see how flexible and how much you can evolve, work around it, and then, and then keep moving towards your goal. Uh, okay, so plan for the breakdowns. So I'm gonna help you with that planning right now. One way to plan is to think about what it would feel like to have a breakdown. Okay, I really was seeing progress. I had lost six pounds, I was doing good, and then a crazy work project happened at work and everything now is stalled as far as like my personal self-care routines. I can't get back to um, <clears throat> the gym at the normal time I wanted to. I'm eating my lunch at a different time, yada, yada, yada. This is a breakdown. So then you can kind of feel into that and reflect, okay, well, in what other ways is this showing up in my life? In what other ways does work really get in the way of my personal success? And of course, work is important for your personal success. Of course, keeping a roof, roof over your head, having a passion, a livelihood, having purpose, um, having money to pay for, for you and your loved ones, this is important, of course. But where have you also been maybe wanting a little bit more balance and then just like pushing that under the rug because you haven't wanted to address it for whatever reason? Okay, 
Number four, then you start. So this is the head part. This is the masculine side. This is the forward moving, intentional, focused part that gets to step in within us. We all have a balance of masculine and feminine, right? So this is where the more the masculine steps in and says, okay, I'm going to start the game plan. I'm fearful, but I've created a strategy. I've done my research. I felt into my body. I've gotten permission from her or him and or it or whatever pronoun. And I'm going to start. And then you start. Okay, step number five, you have a breakdown. So this is not the planning for the breakdown. Now you're really having one. And this is when... The opposite side comes in the heart the feminine the self-accepting the gentle like super aware part of us that's like okay I'm gonna work my magic now and how the magic is worked is number six the gap so there's a there's a gap between when the breakdown occurs your response and then that will determine whether or not you get back on the horse or whether you like Either whether you get back on the horse that time or how many more times you have left to get back on the horse, like, because you're going to have more breakdowns. So how many more times before you run out of steam? So here's what I mean by that. This gap is all emotional. You make a decision about yourself. You make a decision about the way that you operate and what you deserve and what you're worthy of. And I mean, I could go on and on. Like, I'm lazy or, oh, I just... I had a minor setback. This is neutral feedback. Or, man, this will never work for me. See, I told you so. I, I just suck. I'm just, I'm not going to be a fit person. I'm not going to lose this weight, whatever it is. Or you create a story that's like, okay, I believe in myself. I know I'm worthy of my goals. What happened here? Let's figure it out. And then you just kind of like take it apart piece by piece as if you're working on like a, a project or something instead of making it mean something about your actual character or what you deserve. So that gap will either mentally and emotionally exhaust you or it can totally refuel you for getting back on the horse, for getting back to your game plan and continuing your journey. Let's just say you beat, up, beat yourself up because you're really used to negative reinforcement. You're used to being really self-critical in your head. You've done so in your life and you had, you've had some success with that. And so let's say you get back on the horse. It's only so many more times there is an expiration date with that style of behavior towards yourself before that's it. You're done and um, you're not going to get back on the horse anymore because it's too mentally exhausting and emotionally draining for you to just keep beating yourself up like that. So if you want long-term results, the gentler you are with yourself when you mess up, the more likely it is that you'll get those long-term results. Okay, and again, let's use our other person analogy with body love. So, okay, this is body love. What if I love someone else? Is this the way that I would talk to them? You suck. I told you you'd never lose the weight. I told you you wouldn't be able to like make this happen. I told you like work things would arise and you just, you just get lazy, blah, 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 blah. No, you wouldn't talk to someone that you love like that. Of course not. So why are you talking to yourself like that? Be on your own team. Have your own back for once. Be nice to yourself. It's going to pay you dividends. I'm telling you, let yourself off the hook a little bit. This is the feminine side. Don't let yourself off the hook all the way. Then there's no masculine. A little bit of each. Nice little blend. Okay. <clears throat> uh, number seven, make any necessary edits. So after your breakdown, you may have some new information to play with. Okay, that breakdown taught me that, um, like it, like that. I'm using the work, the work example. This breakdown taught me that it's very hard for me to say no to work commitments, and I don't have any other employees in place to lean on when we get like an upsurge of work, and all my self care routines go to the wayside. So I learned some information. That means I may have to hire somebody, train them up. And that may take a little more time from here. So now I know I need to do my workouts over here, so on and so forth. So you adjust the game plan according to the new information you learn from that fruitful, awesome breakdown. You emotionally hold yourself and care for yourself. And you're like, it's okay. I got me. I got my own back. I'm awesome. I'm not an idiot. I'm, I'm cool. 
and you get back on, you get back up and you um, continue forward. Now we're using a little more of our masculine again. Then number eight, trust that all the breakdowns along the way are happening for you, not to you, to reveal what you still have yet to learn and grow into and take them in stride and glean from them what you need. This is how you rig the game to win. So that was one of the other things that I mentioned we're going to talk about. Body love is essentially rigging the game. Using your masculine and your feminine side in fitness and applying both at the appropriate times is rigging the game to win. It's not just all masculine guys and women. It's not just all like, go for do the thing, 15 reps no matter what. It's also attunement with the body, going inside, listening, asking for your body's permission, and then seeing what information you get from that. And then when the breakdowns occur, that's the other big time when, the, when your feminine can come in, your caring, self-accepting side can come in and say, hey, it's okay. We only get one body. We get another chance. It's going to be all right. This doesn't mean anything about me. It's just neutral feedback telling me that I have something to shift a little bit. Okay, so you'll see a lot of people on one side like that look like they're not having that much fun and you'll see a lot of people on the other side. So you see people, I know you do, if you are the gym, you see people who are like all in that one side, that old school style of fitness. It's very, very masculine. It's like, you know, no pain, no gain. You don't get the butt you want by sitting on it. Nike, just do it. Like that's that side of it. And you see people like adhering to that, like a religious belief. And they look a little tired after, I mean, at first they'll look fresh. If it's a brand new person, like a younger person that's just starting out and, and that's what their main ethos is, they'll look fine in, in many cases. But then take that same person 10 years down the line, not sustainable, I'm telling you. Then on the other side, you'll see people who are maybe a little too floofy and a little too like ebbing and flowing and oh I'm just gonna go wherever my body takes me and wherever it tells me and that's awesome and that works for some people everyone's got a unique percentage of both a, a unique blend of both but if we want to be fit if we want to have like healthy strong lean strong bodies like just in that word a strong body does require a little bit of that other energy that focused persevering, intentional, forward-moving energy, like goal-oriented energy. There is some of that. So when we see someone who doesn't have any of that and we want to be a fit person, someone who's lacking that energy, um, that doesn't seem desirable as, as either, uh, oftentimes. Um, so we've established that body love is a balance of both energies of self-acceptance and the desire to become better. And so the final subtopic of this class I want to go over, this deals with social media and self-comparison. So it's become increasingly difficult for some of us to maintain body love when we're scrolling past endless photos of Photoshop fitness models on Instagram and we're unwittingly comparing ourselves to what we see, especially if we're like at the beginning of our fitness journey or we've just started up again and we're trying to lose this weight and we're comparing ourselves to every single fit model that we see and it's like we can't do that because we're just at a different stage and the comparison in and of itself doesn't even it's paradoxical like you will never be them they will never be you you will always have strengths where they have weaknesses and vice versa there will always be who is it uh abraham lincoln i think said like Everyone is, is my superior in some way. Like everybody's killing it at something, crushing it, not to use a violent term, but like everyone's a rock star at something that maybe we're not at or someone else is not at. So everyone's got their specific strengths. So the comparison game in its true essence just doesn't make a lot of sense. So there's that. Now let's go back to like where it relates to body, love, and fitness. Um... Yeah, this ideal of perfection makes it tough sometimes to accept what we see in the mirror if what we see is really different from these models. So here is my pragmatic, immediately usable advice. You ready? <clears throat> Number one, choose a couple of things you want to change. So don't even think about these models for a second. Just think about things that you want to change. And if you have more than three goals, you can get to the rest later, but only start with two to three. So if you have like 
a lot of fitness goals. Just pick out the ones. If you're having trouble deciding which ones, don't go with your head in this case, in this particular scenario. I'm not gonna always say that, but like I should, if a statement starts with like, I should lose this weight or I should make this part of me smaller or I should build a bigger butt. If that's what you're hearing, it may be coming from your head and the goals that you're that are like the lowest hanging fruit that are going to be easiest for you to accomplish are the ones that really tug at your heartstrings. So the ones that just like, oh, that would feel so good to have that goal. Like, oh my God, if I could just have that, that would be so exciting. Like that type of vibe, that energy. Sorry about my super shiny forehead, you guys. <laughs> that is like what we're after. Because you're more likely, because there's an emotional attachment there. So you're more likely to get that goal. Remember, we don't really want to be fit because we want to be fit. We want, we want that because of the feeling that it, it emotes. We, we're doing everything for feelings, guys. Like... Every action that's taken on this planet is preceded by a feeling. Somebody felt something, so they did something about it. Even a butterfly flapping its wings felt something, and so therefore decided to flap its wings because it felt something. So we want to be fit because we're feeling a way about it, and we want to feel another way about it, oftentimes. So get an alignment with, like, get a congruent feeling going. Oh, it would feel so good to have, like, a big juicy butt or <laughs> it would feel so good to have like this little snatch waist so that I can wear these like jeans that are in my closet like just think about the feeling of it and it can be as shallow and seemingly aesthetically based superficial whatever as you want or it could be something deeper hey I really want to lose these 20 pounds because I want to see my kids you know graduate and I want to live a long life and be healthy and be a great example for them or I want to lose this baby weight because like my kid's gonna be a toddler soon and I want to be able to run around the playground with him or her and not get out of breath. Like these are deep, deep things. But don't be shaming yourself if your goal is shallow. Don't be shaming yourself if you are honest and you tap in and your truest desire feels really shallow and superficial and vain. That, listen, we're people, we're humans, and humans have egos, and egos mean sometimes there's some vanity, and that's okay. Vanity is still connected to a deeper, more, like, substantial feeling. I promise you. Okay, so don't shame that part of you. Um, all right, so here's the here's the game plan. First, pick a few things. I got, I got derailed. I was like, oof, I really want to, I really want to, like, drive this home that that we want to like have just a few goals and they can be anything that we want as long as they feel really like, oh, so to have. We're like, oh, I gotta have that. Like a really like deep feeling from the heart, not from the head. Okay, next, choose a couple things that you love about yourself that you'd never ever want to change. Okay, so um, to give examples of these, if you look in the mirror and you're just like really upset because you weigh a certain amount and you're like not toned and you don't have a lot of muscle and you really want to make these changes and you haven't gotten around to it, stop for a second. And now look in the mirror at some of the things that you love about yourself. Maybe you love your eyes. Maybe you don't love your greasy forehead like me right now. <laughs> Maybe you love your dimples. Maybe you <laughs> um, love like your hair maybe like you know you're like i um i've heard people love like my hands before and i've loved like you know someone i date like their hands um so you can borrow something someone else said even if it's really hard for you to think of things that you love about your appearance but yeah so pick a couple things that you really love about the way you look yes granted there are things to love about you know what's inside but this is about fitness this is about body love so we're looking at the physical okay um then create a game plan around the goals so reference back what we talked about earlier in this talk in this master class create a game plan around um the goals that you set that things you do want to change and as you're executing the game plan keep celebrating the fabulous physical qualities that we just talked about that you would never change. So as you're, hold on, let me make sure this is still frame. Yes. As you are going for it with your goals, always stop and look at like what you love. So for instance, I have a best friend and when she was trying to get really fit, 
She hated her legs. She really did. It was sad because her legs are amazing. But anyway, she didn't like her legs and she really wanted to get them to look more toned and less like cottage cheesy, as she would say. But she always loved her butt. So she didn't like her legs, but she loved her butt. And she has like the best butt ever. So yes, she absolutely has a fabulous butt and she always loved it. So what she did, she focused on her glutes. She fo focused on the things she loved. She focused on her butt. She trained butt. She did train legs, but she would always go back to like what she loved about her body, especially as she was scrolling through Instagram. She would like see things that she wanted and that she didn't have, particularly in the legs department, but she would always reflect back on like, well, I have this awesome butt. So guess what happened? Her butt got even more awesome and her legs got completely toned up just like she wanted them to be and she fell in love with them. But do you see how there's a deeper emotional connection happening there? She was signaling to her body over and over and over again, this is the emotion that's like safe to feel and that we want to feel and that we desire to feel about like specific body parts. And it translated over to her legs and then her legs toned up. So the energetic stuff, the emotional intelligence stuff is so interlinked. It's so important when we're trying to pursue long-term fitness goals. Oh, and the real end of that story, guess what? Her legs still look amazing. She's still fit. She wasn't a one hit wonder. She didn't just like get whatever her goal accomplished for the short term because she took the time to do this process. Okay, so choose a couple things you wanna change. Choose a couple things about yourself you'd never change. Create a game, game plan around your goals, the things you wanna change. Go through the steps that I outlined earlier in this video. Um, and as you're executing, keep celebrating those qualities that you never want to change. I love my eyes. I love my butt. I love my hair. I love my smile, my hands, whatever. Um, and seriously, do it every freaking day. Like every freaking day, look in the mirror and just be so all up in all about yourself with those things that you love. Um, and don't have shame around feeling vain or whatever. Like this is so much deeper than that. It's really, really not like a vain, superficial thing as I've already outlined how much deeper it goes. Um, so every time you think about your goals, also think about the positive traits that you love. Not only will it make the results come faster because your body will feel loved and safe. Um, remember relationship with another person analogy. So if you make another person feel safe and loved, what's going to happen? They're going to open up to you more. You're going to be rewarded for that too, because it's not transactional. It's just the way human connection works. It's like a give and take, you know, this person's nice to me. So human nature makes us just automatically want to be nicer to them because they were so kind to us. It's the same thing with our body, guys. I'm telling you, the body will open up more and give you what you're after if it feels safe, if it feels like you're taking care of it and you have its back. <clears throat> ah, the other thing, okay, so basically... If you haven't caught on to this already, I'm just going to name it. This is kind of the sandwich method that you're doing on yourself. So uh, do you guys know sandwich method? It's basically like positive compliment feedback that someone may take as criticism, positive compliment. So in this case, sorry about the train. In this case, it's like, this is a positive thing about myself. Here's something I want to change and shift and I'm going to do something about it. And here's something else I love about myself. And I'm telling you, you'll, your results will speed up so much faster. And then the other wonderful thing about that is when you're looking at these um, fitness models in the DM, sorry, not in the DMs, on Instagram, on YouTube, whatever, you will now feel better as you look at them because you will be, it will start to really, really be ingrained in you like, oh yeah, but I like have these really nice eyes. So I'm cool. It's okay that I don't have her or his abs yet. Cause like, I love my smile. Like, you know what I mean? It'll, it'll neutralize those comparison, jealousy, like weird feelings that actually, those emotions actually keep you from your goal longer. Cool. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll feel so good. You'll feel so much better. The next time you're scrolling, the internal conversation will not be a tone of like hopelessness and depression. It will be like, yeah, they've got that, but I'm also working on that. I'm on my way to having that. And I've got this also. So with that, I'm going to sign off. Go ahead if you'd like to, if you'd like to, share, save, um, save this IGTV for later. Like maybe you caught a little bit of it and you like have a long car ride or like you're going to do some chores or something and you want to listen to the rest of it. 
Um, please comment below if you feel called to and tell me what your favorite part of this was, if you got like one nugget out of it. Um, and also, if you feel called, DM me your goals for 2022. I really want to hear like what your health and fitness goals are. Um, I just always like to have one ear to the ground and like understand like what people are really into, what the current trends are with fitness and like what you want to do, like what you want to accomplish. How, like if you want to lose weight, what do you want to lose? Inches, pounds. If you want to tone up, what body parts are you most excited about building? I'd love to hear all about it. Um, also, quick little plug, the new you in 22, 2022 sale is still going on. So basically it's $222 off, but it's all two two twos. So it's $222 off private VIP fitness coaching with me. Plus, this is crazy, the Grow Your Booty Workshop. All of this is at the link in my bio. The Grow Your Booty Workshop, which is usually $97 for lifetime access, I'm adding that to this bundle for free because I want women to be totally set up for 2022 to get all their body goals accomplished. So $222 off plus a $97 Grow Your Booty Workshop Lifetime Access for free. That's a total of $319 of savings. And it is yours if you want to shoot me a DM or you can book a call at the link in my bio. And we'll set up a time, we'll jump on Zoom, I will hear all about your goals, I'll answer your questions, and yeah, we'll dive in. If you want to hear, like, or if you want to understand more about what um, private coaching with me entails, it's at the link in my bio. <laughs> all of it is on my website. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Well, I love you, and I hope you have a fabulous rest of your evening. And or a great day if you're um, listening to this in the future. <laughs> See you soon, my loves. Mwah! Thank you for hanging out with me. Bye.